G'day guys, welcome to the round 10 edition of my weekly footy tips. We're gonna have to get straight into it because the first game starts in about 40 minutes and like last week, I'm pretty much going to miss the start of it. We'll crack straight into the competitions. You got the Thug Fife once again, Taz Wood leading our fantasy competition. He's got 1650 points, he's killing it. On the footy tipping side of things, we had one person get a perfect nine last round. Real UCAT, U, uh, YT is the username. He's named UCAT on YouTube. Definitely go check him out. Only person to score nine out of nine with a margin of 41. But we are still seeing Mikey EJC up the top of the ladder. He scored seven this round. His total score is 58. And he is outright first with a couple tied right behind him, including Dad. Oh my God. Yeah, that sucks. Before we get into the tips, guys, I will draw your attention to the latest True Footy podcast, 57, with Busher and I that I uploaded last night at about 9 p.m. Perth time. So that's like 11 p.m. Melbourne time. So you might have not caught it in your recommended, but you should go check it out. We have a good chat. We talk about things like mental health and then also just sort of deep dive into the Discord questions that uh, a lot of you supplied to us throughout the week. And at the start, you would have seen we had our first sponsored proper ad for manscaped.com. So for all your ball shaving needs, go check out manscaped.com. They have just launched in Australia. And if you use the code, if you use the code TRUEFOOTY, you will get 20% off and free shipping. Frankly, I'm tired of talking about balls so much in one week. So let's get into the footy tipping video. As always do guys, let's take a quick look at the ladder before we get into it so I can familiarize myself with where everyone's at. If you look at the top of the ladder, you've still got those familiar faces in Port Adelaide and Brisbane in the top two. They're both seven and two and probably been the best two sides that this so far this year. That's probably fair to say. So Kilda six and three, as I say in the podcast, unlucky not to be eight and one. And my boys West Coast with a stirring victory over the Cats are now in fourth spot outright. The reigning premiers are in fifth. Geelong slipped to sixth. GWS back into seventh after a couple of wins and the Bulldogs just hold on to eighth spot. The Bombers putting up some terrible performances. Their percentage is just 88%. Their ninth, Collingwood getting done by Fremantle. That was kind of hilarious, but also, you know, I kind of feel bad for them. They slipped down to 10th. Gold Coast, Carlton, and Hawthorne forming a little bit of a glut of those teams sort of on the precipice of competing for the eight, if you ask me. And then you got North, Melbourne, Fremantle, Sydney, and Adelaide still 0 and 9, pretty much locked into that wooden spoon. But anyway, guys, let's get into the first game of the round, Port Adelaide versus Western Bulldogs. This game is literally probably going to be half done or completely done by the time you watch this video. So you're just going to have to believe that I didn't know what the result was going to be. Nonetheless, you got it's Port hosting the Dogs at Adelaide Oval. Port Adelaide are in some reasonable form. Obviously, they got done at home by the Saints, who were also playing pretty good footy and also kicked really accurately, maybe made that score look a little unflattering to Port Adelaide. But regardless, Port are one of the form sides of the comp. 146% really speaks to that. And last week, they put a Melbourne side that was supposed to be bouncing back to the absolute sword. The Bulldogs, on the other hand, came up against Richmond, the reigning premiers, who again probably haven't recaptured their finest footy this year, but they really showed the golf in quality between those sides. They got a good, tough win against Gold Coast the week before, but couldn't replicate it at the same ground, I think it was last week, against Richmond. So not a great performance for them. They'll want to bounce back, but I don't think it will be this week. Port Adelaide are too good an opponent. I'm going to tip them to win this by about three goals. Next up, Richmond is playing Brisbane on a Tuesday night at uh, Metricon Stadium, actually. So Brisbane, of course, playing away games now at Gold Coast. This, as it stands for me, is potentially a grand final preview. These are probably the two sides I'm most wary of as an Eagles fan who obviously wants his team to be competing deep in September. And Metricon Stadium, obviously, there's no home ground advantage. It's a neutral ground. Both of these sides sort of suited to dewy conditions. I don't really know what the conditions will be like. And Richmond are really starting to recapture a little bit of glimpses of that form that saw them win the premiership. They've kind of timed their run really well in previous years. They might be doing the same this year. That being said, Brisbane are looking pretty ominous this season. Last week on the stream, we saw them absolutely tear apart Essendon. And the caveat to that is obviously Essendon do tend to put up performances that are absolutely shameful. That was probably an example of that. But nonetheless, Brisbane are a really strong side. I'm tipping an absolute ripper here. I really rate both of these sides. I'm going to say the Lions actually get it done and win by seven points. Next up, you've got the Cats and North Melbourne at the Gabba this time. The Cats really unlucky not to get what would have been a really, really good victory for their club traveling to Perth. Obviously, they've just been in a Perth hub. They've had injuries. Ablett and Selwood haven't played and they come up against a pretty fit and healthy West Coast barring maybe McGovern out of their best 22. They led the game for most of it 
and were unlucky not to get the chocolates. The Eagles were just a bit better for longer. Um, but Geelong are playing fairly good football, I would say. Contrast that with North Melbourne, who I think was second last going into last week. They've jumped up with a huge win over Adelaide. To be honest, that's not a great endorsement. Adelaide really, really suck. And North at the time were the next worst side. But nonetheless, it was still, they showed they've got a lot of fight in them and probably have underachieved up until this point this season. They made a big statement by dropping Polak and Brown, uh, but their players like Luke McDonald and Jed Anderson off the top of my head had a massive day out. There is a little bit of an opportunity here for North Melbourne, but I do think Geelong are just a far better side. I'm going to say 25 25- 26 points to the Cats. Next up is Adelaide versus Melbourne. And given that Adelaide have played Sydney, Fremantle and North already this season, they're running out of opportunities to actually grab four points at any point. Now, I'm sure they will at some point. They'll probably beat a really good team like Richmond later in the season or something stupid like that. But as it stands, this is the lowest ranked team they're going to play again this year. Things are looking really rough for them. But sometimes, like I've said in the past, they might lift and seize an opportunity to grab four points because, you know, there's not going to be too many left. And Melbourne, on the other hand, just continue to disappoint me. Obviously, they butchered Hawthorne, but then turned up with a really, really poor performance against the power. Really disappointing. There's a few bright lights for them this year, but I think they're underachieving with the list they have, and I really do think the pressure should be mounting on Simon Bad Loss, as Backyard Charizard would say. There is a temptation to go with the Crows here. There was a temptation to go with them last week against North, and I'm really glad I didn't. They'll be back home. Melbourne, not the most mentally strong side. Definitely could see them messing this up. Nonetheless, I feel feel like I'm going to go with the safe option and tip the Ds, because frankly, they are a better side. It's just whether or not they're going to show up and want it more than Adelaide. Next up, we've got the Pies and Sydney, and you'd say on paper, this is a straightforward one at the Gabba. But again, Collingwood had a fairly straightforward opportunity to get four points in Perth last week. and Well, last night, actually. And the Dockers were too good for them. And Collingwood have this real problem with poor finishes to games. And when I say finishes, I mean pretty much anything after quarter time. Against the Eagles, they kicked four goals out of five and then lost the game by 65 points or something ridiculous. So what's that? Minus 85 for the rest of the game. Against Fremantle, they held Fremantle scoreless in the first term. Kicked one goal or maybe two goals themselves first. And after that, obviously, lost the game, not as convincingly, but we're seeing a massive drop-off, and I don't know if it's fitness or mental. I'm inclined to think maybe a combination of both. They've got a bit of adversity at the moment with players just going out and all this COVID stuff, which I really try and steer away from, but... They're in a bit of turmoil at the moment. Sydney, on the other hand, also not traveling too flash, but they've obviously got the excuse of a lot of youth on the list and they're really developing and rebuilding. And to be honest, I did expect them to get a little bit closer to St. Kilda than they did, but maybe I wasn't respecting St. Kilda enough in that respect. They've got their own injury issues. We've talked about Kennedy missing the year. Heaney's out for a long period or the other way around or something like that. It's hard to really give Sydney too much of a chance here, even though they're not the worst side in the comp by a long stretch. Surely, surely Collingwood sort their shit out and get a win. Uh, I'm going to say 15 points. It'll be a close one. Next up is Gold Coast versus St. Kilda at Metricon. So a true home game for the Suns. Maybe four weeks ago, I would have said this is a fairly evenly matched clash. Gold Coast were looking like finals contenders and St. Kilda were sort of hovering around that range as well. But now St. Kilda are really distancing themselves as a side that could be pushing top six or even top four, dare I say it. Gold Coast last week obviously didn't quite get the job done against GWS, but GWS are a star-studded side. Even if they haven't played to their full potential, they'd obviously beat Richmond the previous week, so they're starting to regain that, and they definitely haven't shamed themselves so far this year, Gold Coast. You do kind of wonder if this thing is starting to fall out of the tail for the Gold Coast Suns. Does that expression make sense? I'm going to roll with it. Starting to lose a little bit of momentum. We saw that happen last year. They got a young team. It's starting to tire maybe. I look at their biggest contributors last week and all of the top like six to eight possession getters, I think it's seven actually, are all GWS players. And in fact, no, it's the biggest possession getter for the Suns was Jack Lukosius, Will Power, and then Brandon Ellis, a fair way down the list. So what I'm starting to think is maybe they're running out of legs to contrast that with St. Kilda, who are actually one of the fittest lists in the squad in terms of like injury availability. They've actually had a really good run with in, in terms of injury luck, which is probably fair enough because last year I think they had probably one of the worst. If I'm not mistaken, St. Kilda have had a couple of rough trips to play Gold Coast in the last couple of years, I think. They might not have lost either game, but they pretty much won in the dying stages, if I'm not mistaken. I could be talking shit there. Nonetheless, with the form they're in, probably have to back St. Kilda. Definitely potential for an upset here. 
But with the form they're in, and the, they were really impressive with the way they were clinical and put away the Swans. I didn't expect them to win that much. Maybe they're starting to take steps. And well, actually, I'm going to put it at four goals. I think this is the final game of the round. I could be wrong. Essendon play GWS at Metricon. I touched on Essendon before. Another bipolar team this year, and I thought their performance against the Lions last week at this ground was pretty terrible. And, you know, just when they started to look like they were getting over their inconsistency issues, they bob up with that performance. This is one of the biggest losses by any team this season. We do know they have it in them to come good. They really, I don't know if it's a mental thing or a fitness thing. It's probably too easy to explain it with a fitness thing. So maybe they just don't quite have the same competitive drive as other teams. I don't know. I'm really talking out of my ass here. The midfield really wasn't up to the challenge last week. Although to be fair, that Lions midfield is a pretty formidable one. They're coming up against another star-studded side this week as well. And both of these sides are fighting for their season. So in, at the current live ladder, you got GWS in eighth and Essendon in 10th. And I, I, I'm afraid only one of these sides is probably going to make the finals as far as I'm concerned. So this is almost like a mini final halfway through the year. And we are actually past the halfway point. So these games are really, really important. Potentially eight points on the line. I still don't think S I still don't I still don't think GWS are anywhere near playing at top flight. They've got a lot of potential. I mean obviously you can say that about the bombers too, but I think the Giants are just starting to warm up and I think they might look at the ladder and think we really can't afford to lose too many more games here or we're not going to get a chance to take revenge for last year's grand final loss. I'm gonna say GWS get it together. S and probably still not going to Quite jump back into form in this particular week. Actually, I'm half expecting a thriller. No, I'll say 20 points to the Giants. Could. I'm not expecting a ripper game here, but the Giants will be too good. All right, that is it. That is the end of the round. Obviously, only about seven games with four teams having buys, Hawthorne, Carlton, and West Coast, and Fremantle for whatever reason. So we'll go look at the ladder again. The top three remain the same, Port, Brisbane, St. Kilda, except I've got Geelong bouncing into the top four. That's interesting. Oh, of course, the Eagles had a buy. The Eagles are fifth, GWS sixth, Richmond, and then Collingwood back into the eight. Got the Bulldogs down in ninth, Essendon, Gold Coast, and Carlton following that. Melbourne make the big leap up to 13th, and Hawthorne 14th, and the bottom four settles as North Melbourne, Fremantle, Sydney, and then the Crows at 0-10. Anyway, guys, that is the end of the video. I did have to rattle through that one pretty quickly because I want this video out on time. Hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you thought of my tips and where you would go differently. Make sure you go check out the podcast with me and Bush. It's called Midpoint of AFL 2020 or AFL 2020 Midpoint. Go check that out. It goes for an hour and it is really good to get back in the studio and do a OG kind of style potty just with me and Busher. Don't forget to check out manscaped.com if you have ball shaving needs. Use the code TRUEFOOTY for 20% off and free shipping and I'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers.